Today on the show, we're going to be looking at Batwoman. If you didn't know that there were two Batwomen, well, technically four, then this show is for you. Our first Batwoman is Kathy Kane. Kathy Kane first appeared in 1956 in Detective Comics issue 233. So why was Batwoman created? Well, once again, Batman's sales figures were dropping, well, plummeting, and they needed to make Batman more relatable yet again. So they decided to create a family formula because that had recently worked very, very well in the Superman family. Another reason for her creation is that there was a lot of accusations that Batman and Dick Grayson, who was a child, were in some kind of homosexual relationship, which in the 50s would have been disgusting. Well, even today, a lot of people would say, homosexual relationship, disgusting. But really, it should just be, relationship with a minor, disgusting. So by creating a love interest for Batman, they hoped that all these accusations would stop. They didn't. I mean, there were scenes of Dick and Batman in the same bed. They were bringing it on themselves. It's super effective! So this Batwoman's origin story is quite interesting. Or should I say, origin stories. You see, over the years, DC has had many different continuities, and to fit each continuity, they changed her origin story ever so slightly. Her origin story, however, changed very dramatically after Crisis of Infinite Earths, which was the merge of Earth 1 and Earth 2. However, we will start at the beginning, which would be Earth 1. Now, Earth 1's Batwoman is actually quite interesting. We shall call her Kathy Kane. She started as Batwoman because she was so infatuated with Batman that she just had to touch that butt. So her way of doing this was to make herself a costume and begin crime fighting. Side note, the way she afforded this is that in her civilian form, she was actually a very, very, very well-off heiress who did circus trapeze and stunt cycling as a living. Now at first, she'd quite easily upstage Batman and Robin in catching the bad guy. However, Batman eventually got sick of this and tracked down who she was and where her lair was. He turned up at her lair, and she was obviously excited because Batman's turned up at her freaking lair, but he pointed out to her how easy it was for him to find out who she was and managed to convince her to drop out of crime fighting because, well, she was a woman. So obviously she'd be shit at it because she has a vagina. She would later disobey Batman's orders and resurface as Batwoman when Batman would disappear fighting Kurt Briggs. Kurt would then later be hit with amnesia and think that he was Batman. Eventually, Bruce was able to resurface and hand over Kurt to the police, and then she would go back into retirement. She being Batwoman. Later on, she once again became bored of living a normal life and went out to capture Elton Cragg after he managed to escape Batman, Robin, and Superman. She would eventually track down Elton Cragg, but Elton took a pill that gave him powers that's similar to Superman. In her fight with him, she was forced to take one of these pills and managed to beat him down super easily. Sick of Batman bossing her around, while she still had the powers, she would go about trying to discover the identities of Superman, Batman, and Robin. She failed, but in the process she managed to convince Batman that she was a capable crime fighter, and he finally gave her his consent. Soon after, she would try and convince Batman to marry her. He said no, but then she would go on to date Bruce Wayne, not knowing that he was Batman. Many years passed, and after a very, very rocky relationship, she would retire from being Batwoman, then come out of retirement again. But this would be her last time coming out of retirement. After a few adventures, which included defeating Killer Moth and being disintegrated into nothingness, only to be restored by Batgirl and Robin, she would be killed by Ra's al Ghul. Ra's al Ghul was manipulating the League of Assassins, and he killed her, and she would be avenged by Batman, but it really did feel like a hollow death. She died in 1979 in Detective Comics 485. So, Earth 2 Batwoman. Now, Catherine Kane was head over heels for Batman. She wanted him. She needed him. She wanted to touch butts with him more than anything in this world. But she had very, very limited contact with him. It was a bit like a Great Gatsby situation or a Robert Baratheon and Lyanna Stark. She just played up Batman so high in her mind that he was a fairy tale that the reality could never live up to. Nonetheless, she would later go on to become a costume crusader named Batwoman. And her plan worked! She did have an emotional relationship with Batman. 
However, her plan worked a little bit too well. Obviously because Batman cared for her, he wanted to see her safe, so he asked her to retire. She said, no. She continued to operate for a while in her masked identity till she found out that Batman fell in love with someone as Bruce Wayne. She didn't actually know Batman was Bruce Wayne, but she could tell by the way he interacted with her, like with women's intuition and all, that he had fallen in love with someone else. After all these events, she only helped out on occasion. Even when Nightwing became Batman, she never found out, and she just assumed it was the same person. She only ever found out the identity of Batman when Selina died and Bruce Wayne's identity was released to the public. For a long time, we never found out if she still had feelings for Batman or not. However, when she ran into Earth-1 Batman, she lamented her feelings of her loss to him, only to realise that it was a totally different person, and her chance at love was over. All of that together just led her to quit being a hero, and thus leading a civilian life. We don't know what happened to her after this, however it is fair to assume that she was just erased from history after a crisis of infinite Earths. It's super effective! Now, the new Earth Batwoman is rapidly different from all the other Batwomen. She was an underground film director and a poet and an all-around wild child. She eventually met Nathan Kane, and he bought her a carnival, and they had seven years of true love, and then Nathan died of the Kane family curse. She was eventually approached by a company called Spiral, who told her, find out the identity of Batman, and she agreed to do this. She brushed up on her detective skills, her martial arts skills, and even took a motorbiking class, and then eventually made herself a costume and ran about calling herself Batwoman. Her plan worked, and after a few months she managed to come into contact with Batman. Batman actually managed to figure out her identity though, and she had fallen in love with him. Obviously she tried to break off all ties with Spiral, though Agent Zero turned the tables on her, and she was forced to break off all ties with Spiral and Batman. All we knew about her death for a long, long time was apparently she was killed by the League of Assassins Sensei. However, due to Flashpoint and the New 52 in 2011, this was proved to be not true. It was revealed very, very recently that she is still alive! It's super effective! Now let's move away from the 1900s and over to 2006, and we meet Kate Kane. Kate Kane is actually a totally different Batwoman from the last Batwoman, and is actually a Jewish lesbian. So both of Kate's parents worked in the military. They worked quite closely with the US Department of Intelligence, and moved around quite a bit due to promotions. After both her parents started working for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, they moved to Brussels in Belgium. One day, Gabby, Kate's mum, was looking after both the girls, when word got back to Jacob, Kate's father, that the girls and his wife had gone missing. Turned out the girls were being held captive by the religion of crime. Jacob was able to track them down and save Kate himself. However, it was too late for Gabby and Kate's sister, Elizabeth, who had been brutally murdered in front of Kate. Obviously being a child, she suffered so much trauma from seeing this. Later on in life, Kate would go on to join the Marines and enter a relationship with her roommate at West Point. However, the commander quickly got word of the relationship and questioned Kate. Kate confirmed her sexual orientation and thus was discharged from the Marines on the grounds of don't ask, don't tell. However, she protected her roommate and her roommate continued to serve. This is an event that Kate still remains bitter about. I mean, it was an unjust law and I really don't understand how it made it into the US legal system in the first place. However, it is what it is and it made a great hero out of her. When it came to Kate's dad and her sexual orientation, he understood totally and accepted her. He was also happy that she decided to protect her roommate and wasn't selfish at West Point. Kate's dad Jacob would go on to marry weapon heiress Catherine Hamilton, thus making Kate a socialite. Kate became kind of infamous in Gotham's upper crust for being a really big party girl. I think like Paris Hilton, but an ex-marine. One night after a party, Kate was pulled over by police officer Renee Montoya, but rather than arresting the socialite, she gave her her number, and the two of them ended up in a relationship together. This relationship soon ended when Renee decided she wanted someone who had a life goal, an aspiration, which Kate soon found after the relationship ended. One night after another party, this girl really liked to party, she went into a back alley in Gotham, 
bad move, and was almost mugged, only to be saved by the Cape Crusader himself, Batman. She decided in that moment that she was going to become a vigilante. With her father's blessing and help, she spent two years traveling around the world, becoming a master martial artist and detective. Her father also spent a hefty amount of money into researching weapons for her. Kate's first adventure as Batwoman was actually in the 52 publication. 52 covers that missing year between Infinite Crisis and one year later. Renee Montoya was actually researching some suspicious activity for The Question, and her investigation led her to a warehouse on 520 Kane Street. This led her to crash a party at the Hamilton Manor. Kate confirmed that her family did own the warehouse, but they didn't use it. It was actually being used until six weeks earlier by a different person. Kate obviously wanted to know what all these questions were about, but Renee refused to tell her anything. So Kate decided, you know what, I'm a freaking superhero, and she took matters into her own hands and tailed Renee as Batwoman. Renee and The Question broke into Ridge Ferrick's Gotham offices and were attacked by Whisper Dare's shape-shifting minions. Batwoman managed to beat down two of them and kick the third one out the window before Renee could shoot it. Batwoman told Renee and The Question that she should not be mentioned in any police report and disappeared into the night. Renee and Question find out about a prophecy in the Book of Crime that talks about the brutal murder of the twice-named daughter of Cain. The two of them return to Gotham and summon Batwoman using the bat signal. The three of them work to stop Intergang's plans, and then even later on, while working on this case, they are joined by Nightwing, who had come back to Gotham from the Titans. Nightwing kind of finds himself a little bit infatuated with Kate, and Kate's just like, mm, boy, you ain't my type, and then starts thinking about that sweet Detective Renee badge. We later see that Intergang had read even more of the crime bible and realised that the image of Batwoman is in there and they put two and two together and realised that Batwoman is the twice named daughter of Cain, who is Kate Cain? They find out where Kate lives and kidnap her with the intention of sacrificing her. Renee arrives to save Kate but it looks like she's too late. She fights Bruno Mannheim and towards the end of the fight, Kate leans up pulls the knife out of her chest and stabs Van Heim in the back. She collapses in Renee's arms and Renee does what she can to patch Kate up. She then takes Kate to the hospital and leaves her there and wanders away into the night. It will be about a year before we see any sign of Batwoman again, but when she does come back, she kicks more ass than ever. When it comes to Prime Earth Batwoman versus New Earth Batwoman, we haven't seen any real major differences. The only huge difference is that Rather than seeing her sister and mother die, she sees her mother die and her sister is lost. We later find out that her sister has actually become the villain Alice, and that her dad knew this all along, which adds quite a bit of strain to the two's relationship. Kate Kane is definitely my favourite hero at the moment, and is second only to maybe Tim Drake. She's definitely the highest profile gay hero that there's ever been, and even was the lead character in Detective Comics from issue 854. However, in 2010, she got her own self-titled series. Also, in the New 52 continuity, she is the only Bat Family member not to be included in the Death of the Family story arc. I really, really like this because it shows how she is her own separate working hero that just happens to have Bat in the name. Okay, she operates around Gotham, but she tackles supernatural things, not villains and crime people like Batman does. Also, she doesn't really have too many deep-rooted connections with the Bat family members. Okay, we know that Bruce Wayne knows who she is in real life, but other than that, you know, she kind of works independently all the time anyway. In terms of her relation to the Bat family compared to a real family, I guess you could say she's like that family member that everyone knows you're related to. Everyone's pretty sure that you're related somehow, but no one's really sure how. And that's okay, because they don't turn up to any of the family events anyway. The series has won quite a few awards, and although my main blunt of DC's bad business practices kind of surround her series, up until then I read the series religiously. I really hope that her character pulls through this rough time of DC, and that she's still the strong, independent, lesbian woman on the other side of it. It's super effective! An interesting thing I heard the other day is that the Bat Family characters are more like... Marvel characters in the DC world because they're not like this pantheon of gods that DC tried to market all their characters as. They live off their flaws and they try and work through them. 
What do you guys think about this? I personally totally agree. Anyway, as always, remember to leave a comment down below, thumbs up this video, and subscribe. Also click all the social links in the description. My name is Faust, this has been Exploring Comics, and it's super effective.